We are seeing so many FCS schools jump on Twitter and saying, hey, we're in the game, which is great. EA recently confirmed that every FBS school is in fact in the game, but what about the FCS? These tweets we are seeing from the schools themselves is exciting. It reinforces an earlier report that speculated that FCS teams will in fact be coming to the game. It doesn't mean that they'll be there at launch, so hold your breath but it could be DLC or simply in the next iteration of the game. Anyone can hop on the sticks and take Michigan or Ohio State to a natty, but honestly, that's not much of a grind at all. If you seek the grind in Dynasty mode where every prospect, even the one to two stars, will be an absolute war zone to recruit just to feel the sting at the end of the season of the transfer portal. Before we jump into the list list, here are a few options for those that want that grind grind. Like, no kidding, this will probably be the hardest grind you could find in the entire game. Here are a few winless FCS schools from last season that are always an option for you. <laughs> the McNeese State Cowboys, the winless Western Illinois Leathernecks, the Northwestern State Demons, the Citadel Bulldogs, the Stony Brook Seawolves, and the Northern Colorado bears all of these schools in dynasty mode would be an experience that would throttle you to your core you've got to play as these fcs schools in dynasty mode in ea college football and if you want to play for free go ahead and hit subscribe and enter the college football giveaway but the first school that i want to share with you all that'll be a personal pick of mine is the idaho vandals and yes they were in the older ncaa games i am aware of that i just want to see them in this next gen experience they are the first FBS program to voluntarily drop down to the FCS level. The Vandals out of Moscow, Idaho in the Kibbe Dome with a capacity of 16,000 is a fun school to take control as. The program has won three famous Idaho Potato Bowls in their past. And man, imagine what you could do to build this program up in the next gen experience. You know, start generating those big bucks, upgrade their stadium in a grand way maybe even make a second run back to the FBS level. And who knows, you could dream even bigger and try to compete again with the Boise State Broncos, their in-state rival. Finishing second in the Big Sky last season, only behind Montana with a 9-4 and record. They take on the Oregon Ducks in week one of the 2024 season, and that's where you will jump in in Dynasty and take control. All right, now let's move into the main reason why you're here, the cream of the crop of this list, some top FCS schools to look into. Let's start off the list with an easy one. How about taking control of the North Dakota State Bison? They might have only joined the FCS in 2004, but they have the most FCS titles in program history, nine. That's a decade's worth of dominance in the 2010s, and they're still very relevant today. The team is already one of the most accomplished and successful FCS teams in many categories. Since 2011, the North Dakota State Bison have a record of 149 wins to 12 losses, which is a 9-2-5 winning percentage. A few recent quarterbacks from the program have been drafted, notably Carson Wentz, Trey Lance, Easton Stick. Last season, they went 11-4 in the Missouri Valley Conference and ended up seeing their Dakota rival host up the national championship. Looking to bounce back this year and do bigger things, they'll start off their 2024 campaign with a week one day against Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. Oh, Lord. We, we covered North Dakota State, so it's only fair to cover South Dakota State as well. The Jackrabbits outperformed their rival across the border and walked away with a national championship this last season. In fact, that's back-to-back -back for these guys. They arguably had one of the best seasons in FCS history last year, outscoring opponents 28.6 points per game. They cruised to an undefeated season on the way to the ship. Montana State and Southern Illinois gave them a game, but it was fruitless nonetheless. 29 players have been drafted, 7 currently play in the NFL, Dallas Goddard tight end for the Eagles, Pierce Strong Jr., Tucker Kraft, among others. Why not jump in and play as the Jackrabbits and go for that three-peat? The Royal Blue in gold, a part of the Coastal Athletic Association and Sleepy Joe's alma mater, if you care. The Fighting Blue Hens are recognized as a perennial power in FCS football, the seventh winningest program in FCS history, and the only FCS program to average more than 20,000 fans per regular season home game during the early 2000s. The Hens are moving to the FBS in 2025, so they will for sure be in next year's copy, but sooner if EA brings us that DLC. The school has produced five notable NFL quarterbacks, with the biggest name of all being Joe Flacco, the quarterback for Delaware in 2005 to 2007. He was a first-round draft pick for the Ravens. 
and he made a swift and unlikely ascent to starting quarterback in 2008, leading Baltimore to many playoff appearances and, of course, one spectacular Super Bowl victory. Delaware has won 17 conference titles, five D2 national championships, and one D1 FCS natty in 2003. This is a great school to jump in as in dynasty mode and usher in the new era towards the FBS. The Eastern Washington Eagles, a part of the Big Sky Conference, play on the red turf. The field is called the Inferno, no joke. And I must say, it's a fitting name. I know some people are purists for the green grass, but I think the colored turf like at Boise State and here at Eastern Washington make it just a really fun school to play as in once in a while. Fun fact, the first year that they installed the red turf was in 2010, and they went on to win a national championship that year. And that was their only national championship. When you think of Eastern Washington, one stud might come to mind, and that's Cooper Cup. A couple others are in the league right now, including Kendrick Bourne, a receiver for the Patriots. Last season, they took a bit of a stumble. They finished ninth in the big sky with a four and seven record. So this team would be a really strong candidate for me to pick up first in dynasty mode for the new game and get them back right. Grambling State is the premier HBCU program in FCS history. The Tigers have 14 conference titles since the formation of the FCS in 1978 and won the 2016 Celebration Bowl, which is considered by many to be the HBCU National Championship. The Tigers are the most successful HBCU program since the formation of the FCS, and they were the first HBCU team to win the Walter Payton Award when running back Walter Dean took home the award in 1990. Over 100 alumni have been drafted in the NFL, including four Hall of Famers, Willie Brown, Buck Buchanan, Willie Davis, Charlie Joyner. Last season, Grambling went 5-6, and six, so it's time to get to work with this squad. One of the oldest football programs in the world, Harvard began competing in the sport in 1873. The Crimson Legacy includes 13 national championships, all fairly dated, but impressive nonetheless and 20 College Hall of Fame inductees, including the first African-American college football player, William H. Lewis. They haven't had that natty in over 100 years, but they did recently win the Ivy League Conference title this last season. There have been some notable players here and there in the NFL, including Kyle Juszczyk right now, Cameron Brait, but we also can't forget recently retired Ryan Fitzpatrick. Last season, they went 8-2 and two and won their conference, and I must admit, I am intrigued by Ivy League football, and I think in the new game, with their unique playbooks and play style, this could be a lot of fun. The Grizzlies are tied for the most Buchanan Award wins given each year to the FCS Most Outstanding Defensive Player and are one of six FCS teams with a ranked FBS upset. They have been making the playoffs since the 1980s, and man, look at this scenic outdoor stadium. Pretty legit stuff. Montana has won two national championships a couple decades ago, but more recently went to the national championship game this last season, only to drop it to the Jackrabbits 23-3. Finishing first in the Big Sky, going 13-2 in their 2023 campaign, this is a tried and true choice if you want to jump right in with a competitive FCS team. We can't talk about Montana without Montana State, right? The Big Sky rivalry is alive between the two Montana schools. Located in Bozeman, Montana, the Bobcats have claimed three national championships, one at the FCS level in 1984. One player got inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and that was Jan Stinnerud, a place kicker inducted in 1991. Six graduates from the Bobcats have gone to play in a Super Bowl, and others have made an impact in leagues around the world, like the Canadian Football League. Travis Lillet was the Canadian Football League MVP back in 2011. Unlike the Grizz claiming the Big Sky last season, the Bobcats went a respectable 8-4, and four, but they left much to be desired on the table. Take back Montana with the Bobcats in your FCS college football dynasty. Primarily known as a basketball school, they're also worth noting on the gridiron. The Wildcats have won three Walter Payton Awards in 1997, 2001, 2014, and also a Jerry Rice Award in 2012. Former Villanova coach Andy Tolley was the head coach of the program from its reinstatement back in 1985 all the way through 2016, racking up one natty along the way in 2009. Numerous players have found their way into the NFL, including Hall of Fame defensive end Howie Long, a second round selection in the 1981 NFL Draft. Villanova also might be well known for producing longtime NFL running back Brian Westbrook. Last season, Villanova went 10-3, going a perfect 7-0 in Coastal Athletic Association play. 
let's put this school on the map as a football program year in, year out in our dynasty mode. Winning four titles in the 1990s, the Youngstown State Penguins. Yes, I said Penguins. Check out this fire helmet and mascot. These guys have hit, though, a bit of a downstretch of late. That doesn't take away from the rich history. It just means that you need to build them back up again in dynasty mode. Among current FCS teams, the Penguins' 29 playoff victories rank third all time. All but seven of those wins came in the 1990s when under the direction of coach Jim Tressel led them to four Division I AA national titles. Since the 90s, the Penguins have been hit or miss. Last season, they finished 8-5, and five, a part of the Missouri Valley Conference. It's time to get this school waddling back to the natty in maybe one day into the FBS. Northern Iowa's won 33 conference titles, the most out of the four Iowa Division I institutions. They've won two Iowa Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Championships, 12 North Central Conference Championships, three Association of Mid-Continent Universities Football Championships, and 16 Missouri Valley Football Conference Championships. Wow, what a mouthful. UNI has been producing some impressive pros of late. Good amount of offensive linemen, but also recently David Johnson, who was a third round pick in the 2015 NFL draft. He had a notable stint with the Arizona Cardinals before kind of fading off into the either. Last season, these guys finished six and five and third in the Missouri Valley Conference. So it's time to pounce with the Panthers again in dynasty mode because we can't settle for mediocrity. Go check out my list of FBS schools. You got to go rebuild in dynasty mode if you haven't already, but I hope this got you fired up as much as I am, and I'm so ready for EA College Football 25. Keep it here with King Sponge for all your college football essentials and gameplay.